All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 27th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2023. Uh, I happened to notice this morning, after I had done the video, I just posted uh, a story by CBN. I don't recommend them. They're not a solid thing. But on um, the dramatic fall-off in church attendance, which I have noted, and it's not just among the, the well, the, the liberals, nobody goes to their churches anymore. <laughs> you know, like here, the largest church, a physical church, uh, almost a cathedral, uh, uh, First Methodist Church here in Danville, a big stone edifice. Uh, I think there are 200 members, and you know that probably 50 show up on Sundays. Uh, how do they get subsidized on that? And they're, of course, into the rainbow culture. One of my neighbors a few blocks down is uh, put signs from their church out in front of her house. Uh, the sign is, one side is, says the United Methodist Church, such and such, and the other side says, learning to love like Jesus, rainbow flag in the porch, <sighs> parading sins like Sodom. I mean, it used to be people were ashamed of their sin and hit it. Not anymore. They boast in it and display it publicly at every opportunity, every day. Advertise their sin. And then advertise, well, that's why the United Methodists are no longer united. But, given Wesley's uh, doctrine of, of the four-legged stool of authority, that by not the Bible alone, it's not completely irrational that they are where they are. So when experience becomes a standard of authority, and reason becomes a standard of authority, and tradition becomes a standard of authority, and not Scripture alone, well, all things can happen that aren't good. It's no longer what God says. It's what we think is right. And that's what happened to the United Methodists. That's what happened to the followers of Wesley in general, including the Holiness Movement and everything else. All right, so this morning I was talking about worshiping in spirit and truth, and that's the title of the video, Worshiping in Spirit and uh, Truth. Uh, Subcaption there, Thinking About CCM and Worship. I was thinking about CCM. I don't know what led me to think about that, but I was also thinking about, okay, I'm going to go to church today, and this is a fundamental, uh, independent fundamentalist Baptist church, uh, a good one. It's not some crazy King James only, uh, God hates fags thing, which is there's no fundamental Baptist churches that actually do the, no, that was something else. That Yeah, I know what they were. Uh, no, they, they would not be welcome among fundamental independent Baptists. Just like Stephen L. Anderson, he had to go off and form his own group. Uh, some of the things he objected to were actually correct, but yeah, look what happened to that. The, you know, see, that was, he was not abiding in the authority of Scripture. He was uh, like Elmer Gantry, uh, a clown. Um, that, that one line from there where the, the correspondent, I, I'd recommend that movie now. It's a Hollywood secular movie about revivalism. And Baptists have a history in revivalism. 
it's not inaccurate. <laughs> but Elmer Gantry, oh, who was a famous actress, actor that played that? Uh, the uh, big city newspaper correspondent that's assigned to this re traveling revival uh, is having a conversation with Elmer Gantry, the once disgraced seminary student that has now joined himself to this revival because he's after the evangelist, the female evangelist. He's, he, he desires her, entranced with her, and he's got a background in religion, so uh, he's a vacuum cleaner salesman that <laughs> joins himself to this. Oh yeah, it's a it's a it's a very actually it's a very rich story because you have this former theological student disgraced disgraced the dean's daughter behind the altar. Um, and she gets kicked out. It, it, it's you know it's it, this is false religion, but it the human nature the the struggles between what you know is right and the sort of somewhat of attraction there, but also these uh, these so called demons shall we say that you can't overcome that keep dragging you down the flesh and the spirit although Elmer Gantry is never born again. Uh, but he has this semi, you know, the sometimes he has certain redeeming qualities, but it's always, you know, it's a complex story. It's, it's, it's good. But Elmer Gantry, there's this line there where the, where the, uh, uh, he's talking to the, the correspondent, uh, and I think they're both drinking bourbon uh, there at the revival. And, he had just kissed the evangelist, and the the, the uh, uh, newspaper correspondent saw that. And Elmer Gantry said, "You're not going to write about that, are you?" And, and he says, "No, boy kisses girl. There's no story there." And he, they're talking about the revival uh, revivalism in that. And uh, the correspondent says to Elmer Gantry, "Every circus, and, well, of course, they're under a big tent. All this revivalism. They're under a." Uh, Every circus needs a clown. And Elmer Gantry responds with, A clown! A clown! Yeah, he's the clown. Um, but this church I attend isn't, isn't clownish at all. It, and I, I, oh, I was talking about Stephen L. Anderson. That's how I got over there. Yeah, he's a, a clown that was claiming to be a, a, a new type of fundamentalist Baptist. The clown. No, they've been around. Now, they can attract a lot of attention, but they're not real uh, Christians. God doesn't need clowns. We're supposed to be sober-minded. Anyway, I, I was uh, thinking about uh, the contemporary Christian music, cause, and I know that they managed to work a contemporary song in, seems like, every Sunday morning. Uh, one thing I wish pastors would consider is carefully selecting the music that's used. And, you know, in, a, in this world, contemporary Christian music is an industry, and it's corrupted, it's for profit. Uh, you, you've got to pay a license fee. And at the bottom, and today, so this is a follow-up, what happened at church? Now, I was intending to just be quiet and not sing. I don't, uh, my practice is not to sing that music because I've never seen it before. How can I, and, and the worshiping in spirit and truth, you can't worship in spirit and truth and sing what you don't even know, what you have, you haven't examined the words. You haven't thought about what it's saying? You don't know who wrote it? Oh, it makes me feel good. Probably a pipe of dope will do that, too. Or some pills from your uh, doctor. They, they can have feel-good pills, you know, and bennies and things like that, anti-anxiety meds, antidepressants, uppers, downers, whatever you need. Legal. Drugs, mind-altering drugs. <sighs> so
So I went to church, and uh, sure enough, they uh, the time came, and they were going to put up, it's like the third song. And it came up on the screen, and I really didn't have time to get a good look at the text, and all of a sudden the screen goes blank and stays blank. Video projection systems and the software, its they seem to be easily confused. And sometimes you, you have trouble getting back to where you were. It's not always rationally arranged for, you know, the, considering the problems that come up. And, and it, I mean, you, 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 like, how many times have you seen a slide projection system? I mean, a, a video PowerPoint or something, and they can't get back to the previous slide that they got skipped over or something like that. They can't get back to it, or it gets confused, or they have difficulty. Well, the screen went blank and stayed blank, and I'm there like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, because I've just been thinking about that this morning, and because I wasn't going to say anything, and then... And then uh, the, the the music leader, who is uh, an el a deacon, I believe, and usher, so he's not a music leader, but he often leads the music. They, and uh, he's up there, and the congregation is not singing enthusiastically. It's having difficulty. And he looks up at the screen and realizes it's blank. And then the pastor who is sitting up there, he comes out, and he's got his the music printed apparently in a folder, and he, he comes out and looks at it, and, and they're standing there, and nothing's happening. There's dead time. You know, it's like 30 seconds, or it seemed like an eternity. And I just blurt out, perhaps one from the book. It wasn't an intentional. I hadn't even thought about it. I hadn't, you know, I wasn't thinking about doing anything like that. And I just, because of the situation, I just blurted out, you know, hey, somebody's got to do something here. And I'm not a member of the church, okay? I'm just there as a, a, a guest, I suppose you could say, as a Christian. I'm there as a Christian. I'm not really a guest. If I'm only a guest, I'm not a Christian. No, it's the Lord has one church. And I'm in it. And anyway... The, the music leader fi uh, finally uh, opens a hymn book, and he said, oh, maybe we can, we can take something from the hymn book. I don't know if he heard me or not. I was loud enough, but just blurted it out without thinking. And my wife, was, I embarrassed my wife. She started, short, gives me an elbow or something. I didn't in plan or did, or didn't intend on it. Was, it needed, somebody had to get things moving again. And I was waiting. Nothing was happening. So, as I said, sometimes it's hard to get those programs back working right. Uh, technology is unreliable, and the higher tech it is, the more unreliable it is. It's not necessary. If you got hymn books, why do you need that stupid thing? And why are you paying a special license to, to, to pay, that gets paid to the estate of Michael Jackson or something? For-profit Christian music. It's an abomination. I object to the whole concept. It's an industry, a, a ungodly industry. People write these things to make money. It's not like a pastor that just feels a need. So let, let's go to the scripture. I, I want to share. I was looking for a verse to share about this subject. Uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3. See if my technology will work. God help it. God, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, uh, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. This is congregational worship or individual fellowship, I suppose. Uh but it's, it's talking, what is the purpose here? That you might dwell in all wisdom, teaching and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Okay, when the words finally did come up 
on the screen. I think, what are we saying? Count your blessings. It wouldn't have been my best choice, but it's one I did use in the nursing home. That's, so I don't actually need to use a hymn book. Uh, you know, one thing you have to do is pick songs people know or they can't worship. You can't worship to unknown music. I do not understand these people that think they're leading music and they, they feel compelled to sing different songs every week. Not ones that are well-known and good. But first of all, it's also singing from in your hearts to the Lord, to the Lord Jesus. Not to Lord Krishna. Not to Lord Buddha. Not to Lord Muhammad. Not to the God of the Muslims or the Hindus or the Buddhists or the Jehovah's Witnesses or the God of the Mormons. See, when I, when I, when I they finally saw the words, it, it talked, it was about worship and, and loving the Lord. And, but what Lord? What Lord? It wasn't G Jesus, I don't think, was mentioned. My memory might fail me, but I, it was like, like a generic. You could have taken that same song and sung it in a Mormon temple if they do such things. Who knows? They're going contemporary, too. See, that's the thing. It's, it's, it's My son pointed out years ago, he said, Dad, uh, the Christian music is the same as the secular stuff. They just change a couple words. I love you. To I love you, Lord. But it's the same thing. It's like Halloween being a Christian holiday. It's like, no, it's a pagan holiday that's been superficially Christianized. And even that's been stripped away now. So this is, it's supposed to be, you know, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, not drivel. And so, it, it, so it, it, it's supposed to uh, be in all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another. So uh, it's, it's, it's instructive. It's a form of preaching to each other. It's congregational worship. And one of the other problems with it, it often uses the first person pronoun, I. This is congregational. It's not I, it's we. We, brothers and sisters, Donald Trump says I rather than we. In church, it should be we, not I, because we're there as a congregation. When you're worshiping by yourself, it's I. Unless you want to include others. But that's it. This, so you look at CCM, and like in this particular song, I mean, superficially, most people would be... Uh, Unconcerned. Oh, it's talking about loving the Lord and what how good the Lord is. I can't even remember it. It's so nondescript, dr nondescript drivel. I can't remember any of these contemporary songs. They're that bad. Not, I don't listen to them anyway, so that's probably why I can't listen to them. Uh, I can't remember them. But uh, the only one that comes to mind as an example of contemporary music is Yes, Lord. Does anybody remember that? I hope not. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's just repeating that phrase over and over and over and over and over again. And I can remember when I was, uh, unfortunately, for a short time, a pastor at Southern Baptist Church. And I mentioned that song to a member of the congregation, and she said, I love that song. We're supposed to worship in spirit and truth. What worship is there in that? Saying yes to a non-identified Lord. I mean, if and if you look at the Jesus of evangelicalism today, it's a nondescript entity. It's not about the man who draw uh, that the the God that became flesh, that dwelt among us and and voluntarily died a death on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead. It's not about him. It's not about his great work. It's about uh, feelings and the per worldly benefits. 
It's, it's not about Christ and him crucified. Remember Paul in one of his epistles says, I determined to know nothing among you except Christ and him crucified. That should be the focus of everything. That's the center of worship. God's great act of redemption. It's hard to find even an old hymn that has that in as center. It's really often about us and about what God can do for us, other than salvation. And even when it comes to salvation, it, the focus tends to be on us rather than Christ. If your focus isn't on Christ, when you're saved, you're not saved. It's on what you're doing rather than what he did for you. Then you've never come to faith in the right thing, the right person. The, to the applause of the pastor, I have to say, several times he repeated the phrase, Christianity is Christ. And I had to say, amen. Amen. But blurting out, perhaps one from the book. I got to embarrass my wife. But is it is interesting after the the church service closed, a woman from the congregation that was you know quite a ways forward of me walked back to me. I didn't even know to know if anybody even identified me or heard me or anything. She comes back and thanks me for saying that. I can't stand that stuff either. CCM is not worship in spirit and truth. It's neutered. It's emasculated Christianity. It's like the charismatic movement. Charismatic movement is not about Christ and Christ crucified. It's about a vague thing they call the Holy Spirit. Pentecostalism the same way. It is not about the core of Christianity. It's not about salvation. That's just something you have to get past before you can get to the good stuff, which is getting power for yourself to get your desires met. Well, that's not why Christ came and died. He didn't come and die so you could, you could get two new cars or a new house or a, a good job or a large bank account. None of those. You think he died on that cross for that? How wicked American evangelicalism is. Uh, because the name evangelical doesn't even mean anything anymore. It, it meant, you know, really it means those who preach you must be born again. Because that's what Jesus proclaimed. True salvation, not just a set of doctrine or membership in a church or being part of a particular nation that calls itself Christian. No. To, and the pastor did this too. It's, it's belonging to Christ. Amen. It's a relationship with Christ, belonging to him. It's not about a denomination or, or a set of doctrine. He was very clear, like, oh, yeah, amen. So I'm not, but like, pastors need to, to grab the reins, and I think some of them are afraid to do so, uh, perhaps because it's hard to get enough, as it is, to get people in the congregation to do anything. But this is so important. It's a matter of sound doctrine and sound teaching. And sound worship. It's about pleasing God rather than man. And I, I fear that in evangelicalism, of course this isn't really an evangelical church, but it leaks over. Uh, it's a, anytime where you got a congregational church, it's, you know, it, it's always the possibility of what pleases people. It's that anyway, anywhere really. That's always a temptation for pastors to be, to try to be pleasing to the congregation. Usually not conscious, unless they're rogues. But unconscious, you don't you don't want to offend people. You don't want to make church uncomfortable for people. But you can't seek to please their flesh, or you're not serving God. As Paul said, if if I'm seeking to please men, then I wouldn't be a servant of God paraphrase but 
You might re remember the verse. So that's what happened. I blurted out, you know, the te technology failed, and I suggested they use the hard copy. <laughs> but this is, they shouldn't be, and I, and I was actually encouraged when that woman came and, and thanked me for saying that. She, she, she liked it enough that she took the trouble to come back and tell me, she, thank you. And I'm not a member of the church. I imagine some people might have taken offense at that, but they were seem to be lost up there. Like, what do we do now? Our technology has failed. We're waiting for the guy back there to fix it. Stop it with the video screens. But that's not the sin. The sin of that is trying to be contemporary, picking... Uh, there, there's nothing good about contemporary music. I haven't seen any of these even so-called hymns that are being written today that are worthy of the Lord Jesus. It's hard enough. To, you can go through the hymn book, and I'd probably discard 95% of what's in there because it's not truly about Christ and Christ crucified, Christ risen from the dead. He is the focus of our worship. We can't worship God except through Him. We don't know anything about God except through Him. He is God manifest in the flesh. Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. And He is the one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. God incarnated, the man, God-man. He is the one through whom we must direct all things. He is why we pray in His name. Hopefully you know that's according to His will. Seeking the will of God to be done. And pastors are, have a responsibility to God to faithfully proclaim, especially the gospel, to preach Christ and Him crucified above all else, and to faithfully teach what the Scripture teaches, to faithfully uh, to bring the congregation to understanding the Word of God and God's purposes, especially in Christ, to understand the nature of human sin, the reasons why Christ came and, came and died and rose again. They're not there to make people feel good, to please people. They're there to please God as his servant. Easy to say from where I'm sitting today. It's another thing to faithfully do that day after day after day, Sunday after Sunday, when the congregation might sees all this other stuff and maybe is why don't we do this they have this song here i really like it why can't we do that why can't we do this why can't we do their programs why can't we have a baseball team or some sort of a youth program that, that has nothing to do with jesus christ like vacation bible school that has nothing to do with jesus christ we have to have these gimmicks we have to have weenie roasts. Food, food usually works, you know. And, and these weird Sundays or vacation Bible things that are turned out by some big corporation someplace to take your money. Star Trek or Star Wars themed programs. I've seen a local, almost local, fundamentalist Baptist church. Not this one that I'm going to. But, you know, I, and I don't think they're probably a bad church, but they've been convinced to do this kind of stuff, too. They, they had the whole top of the, the auditorium in the church covered with black plastic with little holes punched in it for stars. And they had a Star Wars set or a Star Trek set in the front. Vacation Bible study should be about the Bible and Jesus. Not this junk designed to attract people for carnal reasons. Drawing people to Christ 
carnally will only produce carnal unsaved Christians. And you have to complete, uh, continue to satisfy their carnal desires in order to keep them in your building. There's no end to it. And you are doing... You may be damning them because they think that what they're hearing and seeing and taking part in is actually biblical Christianity. Actually God's salvation in Christ. When it's not. So, worship is important. Music is the primary avenue today by which people that attend church have the opportunity to actually participate in worship. Unless you think listening to the pastor is necessarily worship. Well, <clears throat> sometimes, if what he's saying is worthy of acceptance, if he's truly preaching God's word and preaching it well, if he truly keeps the focus on Christ and him crucified, and not on the things of this world, it doesn't matter. The presidential elections don't matter. I haven't heard a word of politics since we started going there. Thank God. Thank God. I imagine most people there have opinions about these things, but they're not part of God's kingdom. And so far I haven't heard about it. And that's good. Because it's of no importance eternally. Donald Trump is of no consequence eternally. Neither is Joe Biden. Neither is the lawlessness of this age. It is simply sinners being bold sinners. Unrestrained sinners. And none of them are worth, worth worshiping or serving or following. A Christian is a follower, a disciple of Christ. He's a child of God. He belongs to Jesus Christ. I was so happy to, to hear the pastor say some of the things I've been saying. Why am I happy? Because I've said them? No, because that's what the Scripture teaches. That's what every Christian should know and live. You belong to Christ. And that should be weaved into our lives in an inseparable way. So we won't just worship what the world worships because they're worshiping false deities. False Christs. False Jesuses. Like the Mormons. Manifestly false. Their deities are manifestly false but they claim to be Christians. And some Christians are, some Christian leaders are so ignorant of God, of Christ, and the scriptures that they count them as Christians. Unregenerate. So unregenerate. They have zero discernment. So we should, uh, again, I'd, I'd admonish pastors and people in congregations please encourage your pastor go to your pastor just go go to your pastor and say pastor could you please please review the music before we sing it could you make sure we're singing biblically sound songs that truly worship God and Christ in Christ let him know because Otherwise, he may not go out. He doesn't want to go out on a limb and have be rejected by the congregation because he's, he's not letting them do what they want to do. No, sometimes people in the congregation are concerned about these things, but they're afraid to say something. Just, just go to the pastor and say, Pastor, could you please examine some of this music before we sing it? Make sure we're not singing things that are not biblically song, make, uh, sound. Make sure we're not singing uh, music that's written by apostates and homosexuals. 
because this is this has been so rampant in CCM. Adulterers, adulteresses, people that have suddenly come out as gay. Many, many popular, you know, there are so many of them. They are not examples that Christians should follow. And then they're selling, you know, if they're, if they're doing it unto the Lord, it should be a free gift to God's people, not something that churches have to pay license for every year to be able to use. If they want to charge you for it, it is unworthy by its very nature. It's commercial of the world. That's how the world does things. Christians don't have to do things that way. If, if somebody wants, has, a, has, a, has a concept of a beautiful worship song that's truly biblical, conveys God's truth, they can be distributed freely on the Internet. They're, the Internet has a zero publishing cost. You can distribute millions and millions of copies, and it costs you not one dime. Why do we tolerate the world running our churches and our schools and following their example? We should do things as the Lord would have us do it. We should think about what we're doing, pray about what we're doing, ask God for discernment and wisdom and strength and grace to follow Christ and be an example of what Christians truly are supposed to be. I fall short. I need God's grace every day because I will always fall short in this world. But that doesn't mean we just throw up our hands and say it's hopeless. No. Salvation is by great, the grace of God through faith in Christ. We not only are saved by faith, we live by faith. The just shall live by faith. That's not a one-time event. That's an ongoing walk. Our faith is our victory, trusting in Christ, trusting in God. When it comes to the church, everything we do should be modeled. We should seek him diligently about these things and toss out what is not pleasing to our Lord and Savior. Hopefully I'll hear an amen from someone.